So at some point, you're going to have to estimate your error bounds. Um, in uh, an earlier video, we looked at um, let's see if I can find the work here. Oh, it got a little messed up. But when we looked at the values we got with n equals 10 for track rule, midpoint rule, and Simpson's rule, we then we looked at the errors that came about when we compared it to what we get in our calculator. So um, we could actually calculate it, the actual error after we've gotten the approximation. But what about just estimating an error bound? Um, so we have formulas for that. And so the absolute value of the error of a trapezoidal rule is less than or equal to capital K times B minus A cubed all over 12 N squared, where K has to be a value greater than or equal to the absolute value of the second derivative of F of X. And we were using all this on the integral four to six of natural log of X cubed plus two DX. So our F of X would be that natural log of X cubed plus two and our a and b are four and six respectively. Now there is a way, and I there's other videos out there that show doing the second derivative by hand, and then um, and this is also the book way, and then looking at basically what the the max value could be of that second derivative, and um, and using uh, your math by hand to do that. And I highly suggest you attempt that along with what I'm going to show you here. So what I want to show you is just a graphical method to looking at finding what we're looking for is the max of the second derivative here. So if we go to Desmos and we enter in the function, you want to enter it in as f of x, not y, f of x equals natural log of x cubed plus 2. And we get our function. That's great. But what I want to look at is the second derivative of the function. So I'm going to say y equals f double prime of x. And it will go ahead and graph the second derivative for me. So this is good for just approximating and, and getting a quick value or a quick estimate. This will actually get, compared to when you do it by hand, um, sometimes it'll lead to a more accurate estimate, which is shown in one of the videos I display when you compare the by hand and... Um, uh, using this method of finding the max of the second derivative. But the key is we have to go on our 4 to 6 intervals, so x equals 4 and x equals 6. And so now that I have all those equations in there, I can actually look at what's going on between 4 and 6. Oh, and I do this every single time I graph this. Absolute value of f double prime x, not just f double prime x. And I think I make that mistake every single time I graph these. Okay, now that I, this blue graph here is actually the f of double prime x, the absolute value of it. And here is my 4 and my 6 for my a and my b. And so the max value on that interval is right here, the y value of 0.1653. So I'm going to go back to my paper here and say, okay, so that means... Um, k has to be greater than the 0 0.1653. So I'm going to go ahead and say let's let k equal 0 0.17. And um, so if you were to do this by hand, so we could look at the um, derivatives real quick. Uh, again, other videos show it. But if we have f m of x is equal to this natural log of x cubed plus 2, I'm not going to go through all the derivative steps, but the first derivative would be um, 3x squared all divided by x cubed plus 2. And then the second derivative would be um, negative 3x of x cubed minus 4 all over the quantity x cubed plus 2 squared. So then we would look at the values between 4 and 6 and see what's happening. And if you were to let x um, equal 4 in this function, you get something like, and again, we're looking at the absolute value, um, the absolute value of this negative 3 times 4, and then x cubed minus 4, that would be 60 in there, all over, let's see, 4 cubed plus 2, that'd be like 66, and that's squared. And so then that comes out to about 0 0.165. Um, and then if I were to take... Um, as long as there's no oscillating in between. So we'd want to know the behavior of the function. And this is a, um, a rational function you could do long division on and look at all the behavior. But for time saving, you know, you could look at the graph. 
Um, so if we looked at the absolute value of 6, uh, f of double prime of 6, then you're going to get something like negative 3 times 6 times um, the x cubed minus 4 is like 212. And then the denominator is, let me move this so you can see, is uh, x cubed plus 2. That would be about 218, and that's squared. And then when I did this, I got about, if I did it correctly, 0.08. And so the max value there would be the 0.165, which actually matched up to our Desmos because there's not crazy behavior with this graph. Um, and so the max just was at the, uh, the end point there on the interval. And so the 0.17 works out well. Now, uh, again, when you do some of these methods by hand, looking at what like the max within the parentheses would be, and sometimes it's a trigonometric function or uh, an exponential, and you're like, oh, okay, the max value is going to be at such and such value. Um, then the value when you do it by hand here may come out to something higher than if you were to use Desmos to get the max, but that would still be okay. You just wouldn't be getting as um, tight of an error bound. So we're going to use the k equals 0.17, and I'm going to uh, put that into my formula. So the absolute value of my trapezoidal error would be 0.17 times 6 minus 4, that quantity, because it'd be minus a, all of that cubed, all over 12 times, it'll be 10 squared, because our n was equal to 10. And then when I calculate this, I get the absolute value of my error for trapezoid has to be less than or equal to, or will be less than or equal to, 0 0.00113. So within this point, 0, 0, 00113. And I went back and I grabbed earlier my error that I calculated on the trapezoidal um, from the calculator answer I'd got, and I got this point 0, 0, 0, 0077, et cetera. So I want to bring that in to look at it. So what I've done now is I've already calculated the error bound. Done. So that part's done. That's usually where your book has you stop. But I want to look and see how this compares to what I got earlier. So earlier I got that the error of my trapezoidal rule was equal to 0 0.00077. Oops. 772. And I'm looking, okay, is that less than or equal to this error bound of 0 .000, 0 0.00113? Yeah. So it fits within that. So the error bound did not get me the exact error of the n equals 10, but it did give me a bound within what that error would fall within. So it gave me a threshold that said, okay, this is the, the bound that will happen um, but it doesn't necessarily give you the exact error. And so you can do this with all of your um, error bounds. So we have for midpoint, it's absolute value of the error of the midpoint is less than or equal to k times b minus a cubed all over 24 n squared. And this is again where k has to be the max of the second derivative. So I'm going to get to use that 0.17 again and then 6 minus 4 cubed all over 24 times 10 squared. And so the value I get here for my error of my midpoint is equal to 0 0.000567. And I'm going to pull in the error I calculated earlier when I did n equals 10. And my error earlier on my midpoint was negative 0 0.000386. So the absolute value of that would be positive 0 0.000386. And my question is, did it fall within the bounds like it says it's going to? And it does. That is less than or equal to 0 0.000567. So it fell within the bounds. So again, the bound did not calculate the exact error. It gave me a region. Now Simpson's rule is a little bit different. So the error for Simpson's rule, that error bound, is k times b minus a to the fifth power all over 180 times n to the fourth. But now k has to be greater than or equal to the absolute value of the fourth derivative of the function f. And again, that, I, I have a video displayed where it shows calculating the um, fourth derivative. But if we go to the Desmos um, graph that I was at before, 
but now I want to look at the fourth derivative. So I have everything set up, my natural log of x cubed plus 2. But now I'm going to also graph the same method, but I'm going to put fourth derivative and look at my interval of 4 to 6. Zoom in on that, and I notice the max is occurring here at um, 4, and that's 0 0.0317. So I'm getting k has to be greater than 0 0.0317. I'm going to let k be equal to 0.04. So I used Desmos to get that, but you could do the fourth derivative, go by hand, and then do that um, by hand to figure out that k. So the absolute value of the error is going to be less than or equal to the 0 0.04 of 6 minus four to the fifth power all over 180 times 10 to the fourth. And again, that 10 is because I had worked on the problems with n equals 10. And so this is going to be equal to 0 0.00000711. Now the error I got when I did Simpson's rule was negative 0 0.1234567046. So the absolute value of that would be positive. And because it has that extra zero in there, yeah, so the absolute value of this would be less than or equal to what was my error bound. So it's all falling within as it should. And again, the error bound, usually that's where you stop. That's where the book says, okay, you've calculated the error bound. Now you know what it'll be. But it's good to see that on the problems we actually did, it's falling within that bound.